Hello, and thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today is Neil Peart's birthday, and though he very sadly is no longer with us, and therefore I can't wish him a happy birthday, I can wish all of his loved ones a happy birthday. And in my opinion, that includes family and also fans who really love the works that he has left with us. So I just want to spend a few minutes talking about Neil Peart's works. And I'm going to cover the fact that he was a fairly prolific author, that he made some very cool instructional videos. And then I'm going to give my top 12 Rush albums. I tried to pare it down to 10, but it just can't be done. I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. So it's gonna be 12. I uh, originally picked 11 because Rush goes to 11, but then there's an honorable mention that pushes things up to 12. So with that said, let's talk about some of his books, and then we'll talk about some of his instructional videos, and then finally, my top 12. And my top 12 Rush albums are in terms of how often I listen to them. And there could be some surprises, so I appreciate if you watch to the end, this is just a way to celebrate Neil Peart and his works, and I hope to actually turn you on to some of his works that maybe you're not familiar with yet, or maybe that you've possibly neglected, not maliciously, but, you know, life is busy, right? And uh, so maybe I can just stoke some interest for you. I would really love if that's the case. All right, so let's talk about his books. We have Ghost Rider. This this is my favorite Neil Peart book. Like many people around the world, this book touches my heart. I have been through some tragedy myself, and it is just so consoling and encouraging and uplifting to, to be able to share in someone else's experience. This is written powerfully. It's written deeply. It's written truthfully. And it's, it's just written with a great deal of vulnerability. It does have a sprinkling of, you know, rushiness in it. But uh, really, the, the healing journey is, is the point of, of this book. And I just can't recommend it enough. It exists in print form and then also in audiobook. Not narrated by Neil himself, but it's still a, a fabulous listen. And I, I believe I've consumed this work at least a half dozen times, one way or the other. And, and probably before I leave this earth, uh, there will be another half dozen. I, I love this book. Okay, so Ghost Rider. That happens to be uh, the title of a song on Vapor Trails, and there is a connection there, okay? All right, so then I'm not going to talk about all of his books. He was he was very prolific, but another one that I listen to and, uh, and just enjoy immensely is Roadshow. And just maybe selfishly, it's kind of like cool to me that he actually mentions my, my region. In fact, like roads that I've ridden my own motorcycle on, um, it's very cool to hear him describe his own experiences on those roads particularly the windy road up Mount Hamilton to Lick Ob Observatory. If you want to de defy death, go ahead and try that road. I totally, totally understand why he was completely exhausted coming down the uh, the other side into San Jose. And it's, it's also cool to like uh, read his experiences leading up to shows that I actually attended. And just to, you know, get, you know, uh, a description of, of what he was going through, what he was feeling like, whether he thought it was a good show or not, and, uh, you know, crazy fans stalking him and stuff. So this is this is an excellent, excellent read. And then I would also mention Masked Rider. It's a bicycle tour through West Africa. And really, like any of his books, traveling music, they're they all bring something very significant to the table. And I actually haven't read them all, but I'm working on it, okay? So um, it's a work in progress. 
And uh, I should segue right to work in progress. That's what uh, would be the smartest thing to do. But I want to mention an honorable mention for um, for a literary work. This is Clockwork Angels, written, I believe, it was a collaboration between Mr. Peart and Kevin J. Anderson. And though I don't love the writing style of this book, I recommend this particular version, the audio version, because Neil himself reads it. And I really just love hearing his voice. You get to hear Neil read this book, and it's evident from the tone of his voice that he's really delighting in the material. And it's 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 fun. It's charming. And, uh, you know, I, I just love being left with the sense in any of his works that he was having a good time. All right. So Clockwork Angels, the novel, Kevin J. Anderson. All right. So let's move on to Mr. Peart's instructional videos. I want to mention first off this making of Burning for Buddy, Neil basically organized and put together a celebration of the music of Buddy Rich and his orchestra. And I believe there are 17 or 18 other world-class, amazing drummers involved in these projects. I, I believe this resulted in two albums. I have heard both, but I'm super disorganized. Like the albums are around here somewhere, or I gave them to or loaned them to a friend but the Burning for Buddy albums are, are great listens. And this two DVD set is, is worth watching. It shows the jazzy side of Mr. Peart, which does come across in some of his Rush recordings, but you, you just get like a mega dose of it here. And, and I love jazz. I love jazz. All right, so moving along. This one is poignant, a work in progress. There are a couple of um, very, very compelling reasons to track this down and, and have it in your collection and to give it some time. Number one, some of the, the mixes here, I believe to my ears to be superior to the final album mixes for Test for Echo. So you get to see Neil show you, demonstrate all of his drum parts for the Test for Echo album. And though I don't love every song on that album, there is a solid EP's worth of music on the record for me. And whether I really love the song or not, to see him perform his parts, it's it's just amazing. And I consider some of these mixes to be superior to the album mix, primarily because the drums are pushed up so that you can hear everything that Neil's doing. And, you know, and I, and I don't have a bias for Neil's playing over Alex or Getty, but I just believe that um, for some cuts, it actually results in, in something that, that works for me a bit better. So a work in progress. And then uh, the other compelling reason to, to check this out you get a lot of narration from neil and there's just this extremely poignant moment where he's talking about the time invested in learning more techniques about drumming even though he was at the time considered one of the best drummers in the world and indeed he he actually was that's just a scientific fact but he studied under freddie gruber to to just take his plane to a different level to like more of a circular organic level. And he, he talked about the time investment and he makes this statement about that, you know, it's, it's a work in progress, but he's got time. And it turns out that in terms of, of time with his, his daughter and his first wife, he, he didn't have much time left. And then in terms of like, you know, the overall human experience, he himself didn't have much time left. So um, it just, it's like a gut punch every time I hear him say it. And this is just an amazing video. And I, I recommend it to any Rush fan, any Neil Peart fan, any drumming 
fan or you know up and coming drummer or practicing musician i i suck at drums but i i still love watching this i i think i understand about a half percent of it but it's it's still a very cool viewing and uh, i put it on occasionally all right so all that said let's get to my top 12 rush albums and i'm going to try to deliver them to you in terms of how often I listen to them. Now, I'm going to start with what I consider uh, maybe a little bit of an honorable mention, even though I do listen to this album quite a bit. I just want to kind of get it out of the way, I guess. Uh, this is Counterparts. I am not a huge uh, diehard fan anymore for a lot of the later Rush albums. I consider them to be too long in length and to have some material that maybe should have been massaged uh, more or maybe just left off the record. I'm a fan of LP, classic LP length albums of around 44 minutes or less because there's a sort of quality control when you have to bring, you know, you only have a limited amount of time. It's the reason why life is valuable. You have a limited amount of time. So, um, with later Rush records, I often don't find uh, a good 44 minutes worth of songs that I actually just love and with without qualification. But Counterparts has eight songs on it that I think are just phenomenal. There's three that for me are skippers. But, you know, these guys are just legends. And I don't believe there's any band's discography ever that, you know, I just completely love every second of it. So it's not a slight against them. Like the guys from Rush don't even love all of their material, okay? So counterparts, this is the SACD, the Super Audio CD. Unfortunately, it's stereo only, but it just sounds amazing. Every copy of counterparts ever sounds amazing. The original mastering, the remaster sounds great. The LP, the double LP that I used to have, and I don't even know what happened to it. It probably got stolen, sounded really good. And this SACD sounds marvelous. Engineered by Kevin the Caveman Shirley. This is a return to just a immensely ballsy rush sound. And then particularly like coming on the heels of Presto, Roll the Bones, Hold Your Fire, Power Windows. This it just has balls for days. It rocks so hard. The songs are fairly streamlined and so i've heard it um expressed that this is kind of like you know corporate rock rush meets corporate rock but man I, I just completely dig it i guess i like corporate rock this is a great record it's got eight strong songs for me so that makes it a solid rush effort in my opinion kevin the caveman shirley you haven't done anything great in my opinion with Iron Maiden in a long time. So, you know, how about a 5.1 or an Atmos remix? I would love that. Please, please, please. Counterparts. I think it's a great record. All right. And so now we're going to go into my LP collection. And I'm also going to talk about some Rush surround and immersive albums when applicable. All right. So again, in terms of just how often or how much I play them. I'm going to try to keep them in that order for you. There may be some surprises. Okay, we have Exit Stage Left. This live album has the sound of pure magic. I remember listening to this record on headphones as a teenager and just feeling like I was on another planet, in another world, in another universe. This record doesn't sound amazing it has kind of a murky dark muddy sound but the music comes through well enough and oh my gosh it's just magical and in terms of Mr. Peart's you know very special offering for this record I I feel that this record contains the world's all-time greatest rock drum solo it's in the middle of YYZ and oh man, oh, it just sings. It's so lyrical, it's so musical. And I love that Mr. Peart kept progressing and pushing his drum talents and stylings throughout the years. 
but uh, this is, it just has the sound of magic, okay? So it's it's not a slight against any of his other solos, but but this is the one. There could there can be only one. There can be only one. So check out Exit Stage Left if you never have. It uh, this is the the LP version, but you know there's CDs as well, HD downloads. So check it out by hook or crook. Stream it, whatever you got to do. YouTube, just go for it. All right. Now it's it's gonna come as uh, no surprise maybe to some of you that the majority of of my very favorite Rush records and most listened to records are from the Terry Brown years. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way, okay? There, uh, along with counterparts, there's there's another surprise for you, okay? All right. So next, <laughs> Caress of Steel, Rush. Um, I think particularly Getty are on record, you know, really kind of dismissing this album, but for diehard nerdy geeky rush fans, like this is kind of like a cult favorite. And um, some people find, I think I'm going bald to be too silly, but for me, like, you know, I looked in the mirror and, uh, notice that I lost a few more hairs and I think I'm going bald. So, um, you know, the steel day, one of the, the best openers of a rock album, um, uh, also opens all the world's a stage. And then you have the, the mighty necromancer with like Rush's heaviest moment recorded of all time, um, in the tower. Oh man. This is a cool record. Uh, Fountain of Lamneth is a little bit of a mess, and and uh, this record didn't do well for the band commercially, so I understand their their grief with it. But it's such a cool listen. I would love to hear this in Surround uh, 5.1 or, or Atmos, so um, it's probably never going to happen because I, I think the label probably doesn't think the money's there. But I would, I would totally love it. Caress of Steel, it's so cool. So cool. All right. And uh, I just listened to this one a, a, a little bit more often. Here is the uh, Lightning Out of a Clear Sky debut of Neil Peart with Rush. We have 1975 Fly By Night. This is such a cool record. Uh, <laughs> Rivendell notwithstanding. This is such a cool record. You can instantly hear Rush taken to a new level. Now, I like John Rutzi's stylings for early Rush, their their bar band days and their debut record. And I feel like nobody drums on Working Man better than Mr. Rutzi. But you can just tell that Rush were headed for something just truly magical and great on this record. And it happens to have received a 5.1 surround mix done by Mr. Richard Chickie. And this is, in my opinion, quite a good 5.1 mix. It's available in the Sectors 1 set or a standalone Blu-ray. And I recommend tracking it down, even though it's probably like completely out of print. I would track this one down, and I have done a review on it so you can go check that out if you want to get some more insights about it, okay? All right, moving right along. And maybe pretty early in my list for some of you, we have 2112. 2112. This is the record that broke them out into commercial success and got the record label off their, their backs. And so then, you know, from... From thence forward, they could just record, write and record whatever they wanted. And this is just such a cool record. It's, you know, slotted by basically everyone on the planet as a super cool example of like hard rock prog. And um, I really love it. I think it has a bit of weakness on the backside, but the, um, the opening side is just pure gold. I think the uh, master tapes for this were were like recognized as like a Canadian national artifact and are protected as such. And that's just, that's totally, totally neat. All right. And I just want to mention, uh, you can get a um, kind of a making of classic albums, Blu-ray DVD of 
of 2112 and it also has moving pictures so you get insights from the band and so i recommend this and then also i want to point out that a deluxe version of 2112 was issued and it has a 5.1 mix i don't consider this a great 5.1 mix and i would really love to hear this ultra classic rush album mixed freshly into atmos Mr. Richard Chickie has just been nailing Rush Atmos mixes of late, and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit more detail. And uh, a cool thing about this set, I think it was uh, issued in 2012, is that you get this like comic book that you can read, and then also as you're um, viewing or you know slash listening to the album on Blu-ray. The comic book actually is sequenced with the album and so you get to see the story unfold i wish that this would be done with other rush albums like like hemispheres crest of steel like all of the the albums that do some storytelling this is this is very cool so i recommend tracking down this deluxe version for the comic book and then um like i said i don't love the 5.1 mix but you can at least put it on in high res lossless stereo and and watch the comic book unfold and i would love 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 to hear an atmos mix of that album like hopefully maybe soon maybe for 50th anniversary so uh you know mr chicky like i hope you get a shot at that okay all right so next we have a record that i consider an album and i believe in one of neil peart's books he also calls this an album so I don't consider this an EP. You have feedback. Yes, feedback. So this is uh, one of the surprises I was um, going to talk about. I bet this one doesn't make it into a lot of Rush, you know, top 10, top 12 lists. Uh, but I really, really, really enjoy this record. And thus, I listen to it a lot. You have every single track here is just a solid gold written song. You have the guys sound like they're they're obviously having fun, just reminiscing on songs that were very formative for them. And this album sounds awesome. In my opinion, it sounds just about as good as Counterparts or Moving Pictures, which um, I would consider to be like the best sounding traditional Rush records. I don't feel like every one of these covers improves on the original vibe of the original cut, but I um, think that it's a fun listen nonetheless. And I don't carry a bunch of nostalgia for the original tracks. A lot of Rush fans really kind of dismiss this because they they just prefer the original tracks. And I think that's mainly due probably to nostalgia. I don't have nostalgia for any of the originals. I'm just in my mid forties. So I wasn't around for any of them. And um, just so subjectively, in my opinion, like I said, I don't think that every one of these improve on the vibe of the original, but in some cases, I, I actually prefer the Rush version to the original. So I absolutely certainly deem this to be worth checking out uh you can get it in cd and i think i i had to like um get this lp from germany you know i love a rush record when i track down a pricey lp version of it because i just love the expanded artwork and i i love the visceral act of cleaning the record and caring for it and dropping the needle cranking up the hi-fi okay so feedback i actually recommend you you give this a chance particularly if you are not hung up on the original on the original cuts, okay? Okay, another surprise. This one probably comes a little bit earlier in my list than it would for many. We have just the landmark, ultra iconic album, Moving Pictures. This is what began my Rush journey. A buddy of mine and I found an unmarked dubbed cassette on his bedroom floor. We popped it in. I fell in love with the music. My buddy thought it was pretty, pretty great, but he's more of like a straight ahead hard rocker. And, um, but we wore this cassette out. And uh, when I went to replace it, I found it on CD. 
And I noticed that Rush had like a bunch of other albums. And so I began investing in um, their other records. And I remember very early on picking up Fly By Night and Hold Your Fire and just being absolutely amazed that the same band could put out such significantly different sounds like all the way from like a Led Zeppelin sound to like a a heavy police sound and then and then pushing onward into like a very polished almost like pop sound and um, I didn't love everything I heard but I was just fascinated and I just couldn't help but just collect them all and um, I became a Rush diehard for many many years I've got Rush tattoos and I've seen every tour from Counterparts onward, and this is the one that began it all. I don't listen to it very often just because I played it out, and radio plays out a lot of the the cuts, and not to mention movies. Um, like, this this album has been, like, heavily, heavily utilized in pop culture, and so um, I have it memorized it like you know it it can play in my head <laughs> rent free whenever it wants so um it is just an amazing album and it is a, a good album if you're not familiar with rush to to start with okay every song is just just awesome it's an it's an awesome awesome record i believe for its 40th anniversary moving pictures was given the atmos remix treatment from mr richard chicky I consider this to be a great, great, great Atmos mix and just an amazing revelatory experience. You can hear things from the Moving Pictures album that I bet you didn't know were there and just hear textures and detail that are just mind blowing. So I recommend tracking down the Atmos mix. Unfortunately, the physical copy, the lossless Blu-ray copy, is only available in the expensive deluxe set, but you can at least hear it streaming, Atmos streaming, um, which, you know, would at least put it within budgetary reach of of far more people. And I really hope that you and me will decide to release Rush immersive mixes as standalones at some point. I really don't think it's fair to to charge such a premium price when a lot of fans are are really only interested in surround and immersive remixes for reissues, not vinyl and toy cars and stuff. So anyway, moving pictures, 40th anniversary, the the Atmos mix, I find it to be killer. It is a vast improvement over the earlier 5.1 mix. Okay. All right. So moving along, we have hemispheres we have hemispheres for a long long time i would have considered this my favorite rush record if not in like maybe my top three or so not only does the entire side a continue a saga from the preceding record it has mythology which i was in love with at the time and it has you know allegories and analogies and uh, it has, you know, the, the ultra uber classic, the trees and the tour de force instrumental of like all time, La Via Strangiato, where all three of the band members are just exercising self-indulgence. And it's just it's just marvelous. This is this is a very, very classic and magical record. And I recommend it probably not as a starting point, especially if you um, like more streamlined, maybe pop oriented music. This is a progressive record and I love progressive music. So perfect fit for me. I happen to listen to the SACD most of the time. It just has stunning definition and I believe it is the way to go if you have the equipment to properly play back SACD. Only uh, stereo, unfortunately, and I'm not in love with the existing 5.1 surround mix of the album, which was available in the Hemisphere's 40th anniversary set. And so I would love to see this album given an Atmos remix. I would love to see uh, Mr. Chicky take another whack at this album. He is absolutely nailing 
Atmos Rush mixes at this time. All right, so <clears throat> moving along, we have the preceding album. We have a Farewell to Kings, and I understand this is not the original album cover. This is from the 40th anniversary set. This is the copy that I listen to most on vinyl. And then importantly, it comes with a Stephen Wilson 5.1 remix on this here Blu-ray. It actually has like really cool on-screen graphics. This Blu-ray is well worth having in your collection, particularly if you have a Blu-ray player. And then especially if you have uh, a 5.1 system, you're just going to experience Farewell to Kings in in a new and amazing way, particularly like Neil Peart's like wrap around like Tom rolls, like actually go around your room. Like it's, it's just so cool. I would love to see um, either Mr. Chicky or Mr. Wilson give this album a fresh Atmos treatment, but this is actually like one of my favorite 5.1 mixes of all time. It is jaw droppingly fantastic. It's awesome. All right, so we are homing in on my top three. My top three, all right? So here we go, Signals. I love this record. It is just the right touch of like classic Rush where you just have these like out and out rockers like Analog Kid and then you have them leaning heavily into the future with like very, very keyboard centric and weird and bizarre and experimental tracks like The Weapon. You have one of the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching Rush tracks of all time, Losing It, which is has just taken on a whole new meaning now that we have lost Neil. I love this record. I love every track on it, even the, the ultra weird ones. It's part of this record's charm. And I want to mention that for its 40th anniversary, it was also given a Richard Chicky Atmos remix, and I have done a review of it. And if you uh, go and watch that, I actually give some recommendations on what I believe are the best sounding uh, versions of Signals, including stereo versions. And uh, this Atmos version just is incredible. Absolute uh, 10 out of 10 for me feel like uh, Mr. Chicky just absolutely nailed this and it just caused me to fall more deeply in love with signals than ever. And I didn't even think that was possible. So, uh, and this Atmos mix, in my opinion, also just bludgeons to a bloody death the the preceding 5.1 mix, all right? Okay, so we're we're getting close to my top. We have Grace Under Pressure. I listen to this record a lot. I might actually listen to this record more than my, my assumed number one. I listen to this record a lot. I was definitely around during the Cold War, and this record just sounds like the Cold War. It's chilling. It's, it's a little bit sterile, but I believe that's by intent, and it just has eight Amazing songs, kind of like Signals. It, it gets very weird at moments, but I embrace all of it. I embrace all of it. It just completely works for me from start to finish. And I hope that it has a 40th anniversary deluxe set coming. And I hope that it's going to receive an Atmos uh, Richard Chicky remix. I would love it. I don't know if the label considers it to be commercial enough to do so. I have my doubts, but I'm sure I'm hoping. So if anyone from UME or Rush Management watch this video, please, 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 as a thank you to your fans, do this, this album some honor. It is very much beloved by many, many Rush fans. And I think, I think a deluxe of it would actually sell better maybe than you assume. Okay. All right. So we get to my number one. To me, this is just the, the pinnacle of Rush. They did great things before it and after it. But for my taste, 
you get the perfect blend of yay old kimono wearing storytelling sprawling epic rush with moog synthesizers and double neck guitars and you know incendiary guitar solos and some of the most powerful rush tracks of all time live staples from the moment this record was released and toured to the very end of their career it's got to be permanent waves this this record is pure magic it's pure magic from the cover all six of the tracks spirit of radio free will you know just immense immensely popular rush tracks jacob's ladder which i'm glad they brought back for r40 i feel like it's one of the stronger cuts on our on the r40 tour video entree new different strings which i regret they never did live i thought that would have been a cool number for them to do during their acoustic sets and then natural science natty sigh which they did I think they brought it back for, I think, the Test for Echo tour, and then it uh, featured in quite a few tours beyond that. So Natural Science, it's like, if I had to pick a quintessential Rush song, maybe not a gateway song, not not for a newbie, but just uh, a song that captures their, their epic abilities and their virtuosic playing and um, Mr. Peart's like naturalistic sensibilities, like it's permanent waves. This is just such, such a freaking cool record. And I listen to it far more than, than moving pictures, even though that album did, did better commercially. Even though this received a, a 40th anniversary deluxe, it did not receive a surround mix. It is said that the master tapes are missing the multi-tracks and but maybe with like um you know peter jackson's separation technology like maybe someday oh man i would love to hear an immersive version of this album but it's probably going to exist for all time stereo only but if you crank your hi-fi loud enough you can get this thing uh sounding pretty immersive and it's it's worth it it's worth it I just love this record so much. It's got just uh, some of Neil Peart's just most amazing playing. This sweeping concert tom rolls and hi-hat figures and ride figures. And oh man, it's, it's and it's got that sound of magic. You know, it's part of the reason why I said ex exit stage left sounds so magical. Like the cuts that come from this album are definitely part of that. So anyway, that's my top 12. Maybe there were, were some surprises for you. I hope that it, uh, this viewing has kindled an interest in some Neil Peart works that maybe you weren't familiar with, or maybe hadn't given a chance to quite yet. So I encourage you to. I miss you, Neil. What a cool guy. A lot of Mr. Peart's concepts lyrically and um, literarily are responsible for for me personally realizing some of my own intellectual and spiritual freedom. And I am immensely grateful for that. And I'm immensely grateful for these records and for these videos and for these books. So, hey, celebrate Neil today, however you feel, and particularly um, by enjoying some of his works, I think would be a, a great thing to do and a great way to honor his legacy. Oh, hey, and I also want to mention that recently I listened to an interview with one of his sisters, I believe it was Nancy Peart, and I apologize if I got that wrong, but it was very cool. She discusses the Peart Family Foundation a lot. It's a foundation that is seeking to do some, some good for the people of Canada. 
in particular. And so uh, I encourage you to check out the Peart Family Foundation, maybe attend some of their events or support them in any way you can, maybe for Neil's birthday, maybe send them a donation or something. So I appreciate you watching. I know that many of you miss Neil as much or more than I do, particularly family. So I have a little bit of a heavy heart at the moment, but I'm going to uh, put on some Rush works and uh, indulge in some of Mr. Peart's works. And um, I think that's going to lift my spirits again. I'm glad that we have his works to, to continue to, to celebrate his legacy. So thanks for watching. And uh, please, if you like what I do, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments, you know, share the video, all that stuff. And... I, I often say live life and surround, but I just want to say live life to the fullest. Life is short. And in some cases, just tragically, brutally short. So, um, you know, rush on and live life however you see fit. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it while it lasts. And, and do good for others. Enjoy life and do good for others. And with that, I appreciate you and I'll say goodbye for now.